Hi, I'm Chris, and this is a presentation that I gave on March 24th at Hive Blockchain Brussels. It only got recorded on a phone, so the quality wasn't that good, so I decided to just re-record it myself, as this might be interesting to some. So what I did, I gave a talk about Giveth. Giveth is a completely free open source platform for decentralized altruistic communities. So what does that mean? Um, when you talk about decentralization, I think this is something that is coming. Um, and I strongly believe that this is the future. And when you think of altruistic communities, uh, we see this as the future for nonprofits. I personally work in the communication team, give it. And so I'm going to focus more on the bigger picture. Uh, I'm not the technical guy, um, but I will talk about the DAP in detail and also about our scaling solutions that we have deployed. So these are some of the elements that I'm going to touch upon. So why are we doing this? How has the blockchain helped us in, our, in achieving our goals? Who are the people who are building all of this? Then uh, some focus on the platform itself and some of the challenges that we encountered. So to dive right in, uh, when I was giving this presentation, I asked people, um, if they had ever been stopped in the street by such people, by people, these very nice, uh, enthusiastic people um, who ask you if you want to donate to charities. And yeah, most of the people put up their hands. And also when I asked how many people subscribe to uh, charities when this happened, the percentage was also still very high. But then when I asked, okay, um, when it comes to the communication that these people while these organizations are sending out, uh, do you actually read them? Um, do you know in detail what happens with the funds that you give to these organizations? And there, I think from 100, we went down to one or two people, and that is not a lot. So this creates, um, I would say, some apathy, less involvement of the people. And some of the recent uh, things that happened that you saw in the media, didn't help either, of course. And that's really a pity because there is a lot of good that we want to see in the world. Um, and I really believe that most of the charities are doing a fantastic job, but it's just not coming across. Um, people are not giving anymore. And maybe they still give, but they don't care. And that's the opposite of what should happen. We want involvement and with the technology that we currently have, all of this is possible. It was already possible, but now with the blockchain, it's going to be even easier. And that's what Giveth is all about. So what currently um, is happening is that when you donate to a good cause, you have no real idea where that money ends up. I, I often say and it's not that black and white of course but i i say it's a little bit as like your money goes into a black hole and you don't really know what happens you're not informed enough and that mostly happens with big scale projects and that makes sense because big scale projects they're very centralized they have these big hubs where everything comes in and then it's given to specific uh yeah causes and specific actions that they are doing but you cannot follow this. And if, if you are not involved and if there is no participation, then then yeah, then, then you're you're gonna feel less involved. You have no overview because there's no transparency, there's no accountability. And that is something that we wanna change. So how we see it is we want to bring back the love. So many, and I think I, I truly believe that all of us want to make this world a better place for us, for our loved ones, for strangers, for the planet. And with Give It, we want to bring back this love. We want to bring trust again. We want to create a new way of working. We want to bring back the connection. So if you, for example, think of how an Uber works or Airbnb, it is not about the transaction. It's about the action. It's about you talking to those people and and, and making a connection, having something that happens. You want to go from one point to another, and this happens. You want to live in a space, and you talk with the people who show you around, but there is no talk about the money. There is a talk about what's happening, about the action. So 
if you want to do this, if you want to make this possible, well, we think you need the blockchain. The blockchain uh, technology has really brought a lot of innovation and this is only the beginning. And so I just looked up like some of the key elements that you can mention when you talk about blockchain that are interesting and, and relevant here. So, and that you can translate in this context. So first of all, there's traceability. So everything that is registered on the blockchain. And when you, and so you can really see how uh, money flows from one point to another because you can see it all. And if you translate this into the context of uh, nonprofits and charities, then you can talk about accountability because you can really talk to people and see when you when you see what happens with your money, you can help hold people accountable, and that's hugely important uh, for charities and especially for the givers, for people who give to charities. The second point, so decentralization, is of course a key point um, when you talk about blockchain. And this brings so much transparency. Again, you can trace everything. That's the second point. The third element is um, user control. So in blockchain technology, you have um, miners, you have the nodes, you have the people who can be involved in governance and so many things. And so that is actually the word that is relevant here. In the context of charities, you have Governance, you are in control, and that changes everything. The last point that I wanted to mention in this context is automation, because of course blockchain works with smart contracts, and um, that does not mean that all jobs need to go away, that there's no more space for humans. Actually, it's the opposite. When you when you do not have to worry that much about overhead, because it is just being done automatically, then you can really focus on what matters, on making a change. And yeah, so this is how we see it. Um, it's also why we talk about these two groups of people. We want to focus on the givers, so these are the donors, and the makers, the people in the field, the people who are actually making a difference, because that is what you want to know, that's what you want to hear about, and, and you want to be connected again with those people, so that you know that when you give money, that it's actually used for the cause that you believe in. So, um, about this you could say, well, that's fantastic, that's really nice, but the you're you're just like talking, these are just words. And it's just a technology. What's the difference? This is not going to make a difference. And well, words can do a lot. This is actually a slide that I've been using for 10 years, I think, for uh, presentations on a number of topics. But to me, it started to mean something different in this context. So when you look to the right, um, this is a swarm. This is a hive. If you're interested or you don't know this model, I would definitely recommend reading Swarm Wise by Rick Falkfinger. It's a really interesting book. And um, what happened, I, I mostly worked on the left. Um, I worked in big companies, in small companies and everything in between. And it was the same everywhere. Uh, there was a lot of centralized power. Um, even if there were managers with with, and there were different levels, it was always this hierarchy creating abuse, creating inefficiency. And that's really a pity um, because technology is really a force of nature and it wants to be decentralized. That's something I truly believe in. And words, it's, it's, words have a big impact. That's also why I love communication so much, of course. Um, one of the first things I read about blockchain technology is that for the moment, the technology is evolving way faster than language. And that's an interesting thing, of course, because language cre creates thoughts and thoughts make change in the world. In the world. And that really brought hope for me um, because I think a change is possible. So that is why. Before I want to dive into the technology, I want to talk about the people. Because I really mean it, for me, it is not about the technology. It is about what the technology will do to the people, the impact that, we, that it will have. 
And why a unicorn? Well, that is actually because we are the giveth unicorns. So we will be, and we are actually the first decentralized altruistic community. Um, and we want to model a new breed of nonprofits. We really want to practice what we preach and to show how um, a nonprofit or an individual can thrive in a system that is decentralized. So this is just as important. It's probably even more important because this is what it's about. So also in our organization, in our organization, we work on this just as much as on the technology, I would say. So this was us in December, um, which already seems like a very long time ago. This was when we were in Cancun for DEF CON 3. And uh, yeah, so this is us, but not really in the sense that we have evolved so much. I think our team has doubled in the meantime because we work with a lot of contributors and it's beautiful uh, to see. And so, um, when we were there, uh, it was nice that we were actually not doing any fundraising. That's that's not what we are about. We were, again, talking about the action, about the things that we want to change. We were uh, uh, inviting people to be part of our community. We are really different in many ways. We are also not a uh, official charity. We are not registered, although well, we are registered, but just on the blockchain. So to talk a little bit in more detail about our community um, and how the technology that we're building and that we're using is really influencing us. So first of all, um, we are uh, really very much decentralized and distributed. So we are all over the globe. So as you can see, uh, I personally live in Belgium. Um, we have people in Brazil, we have people in the Czech Republic, we have people in Switzerland, we are in the US, we are everywhere. So um, that's also, as you can see, I put up here um, a blockchain term and that's, that's because it influences how we work. So a second element here is that we are not working uh, in a traditional way. We work um, with following holocratic principles. So uh, if you haven't looked up Holacracy, you really should. It's very fascinating and also to see how this works. And it actually works in our team. So we work with circles. And these circles have a number of responsibilities, but we there's no leader, not really. Um, there's more discussion and people take initi initiatives. So there's a lot of permissionless innovation and it's really wonderful to see. And the third point is that we find it extremely important to be accountable. So I talked about this before. Um, and this is, for example, um, it's a bit small and you can't see it in detail, of course, but this is actually on our DEP, a week of work uh, of, that I did, uh, where I mentioned all the things that I did and the blue links show you uh, proof of my work. So uh, this is reviewed by my peers. And if I have not done a good job by proving that I actually did this work, they will reject my milestone and I will not get paid for this week. So it's hugely important for us to be strict about this and to be very transparent. And we are absurdly transparent. All our meetings are um, streamed. So you can find these on youtube.com slash give it IO. And um, so we have our governance meeting. Uh, we have all these things happening um, that you can just follow and just jump in and join us. So this transparency is just really important because we want to show that it is possible to just work and not hide anything and um, that, it, that it creates an, another form of connection with your audience. So um, the next thing, when so first we talked about that we are very decentralized. The second element is that we are altruistic. Uh, this you can see in the fact that we have uh, documented our open source uh, smart contracts very well. So uh, the first um, and probably the most used by other organizations is the Minimi token, but we also have the liquid, liquid pledging token, which is very important in our system. And you can find, find all of these on our GitHub, very well documented and being used by a number of projects. Um, 
what we also do is, uh, yeah, we, we're involved with many uh, projects. We have many partnerships. We host, for example, a node for my crypto and my Ether wallet. My crypto will be one of the first DACs on our platform. And then, of course, you have our DAP. Our DAP is uh, what we really want to bring out in the world and uh, just give to the people. <laughs> and then you have uh, the third point, and that is that we are a community. So um, these are our four circles. So we have four of them. Um, and to briefly give you an idea uh, of what we do in these, it is not only the DAP. Giveth is about a lot more. We uh, now often call it the Giveth Galaxy. And um, so the first group, the first circle, is uh, working on governance and is led by Griff Green. And we do a lot of experimentation uh, inside our team. So we uh, recently started working with Lumio to take decisions. Uh, we have our governance meeting, as said. And uh, yeah, we, we change a lot of things all the time to see what works best to get things done. But also on the outside, so recently uh, Griff organized the Scaling Now conference together with the Web3 Foundation. Now uh, we're going to work on an open source blockchain explorer. Uh, so many things are happening. The second circle is the social coding circle, which is headed by Quasia. And they are, uh, well, you can see them actually as a sort of incubator. Um, uh, and they are working on projects such as SmartWed, that is one that just came out. And this is a project with which you can get married on the Ethereum blockchain. So you should definitely check that out. I'm for one, I'm going to get married on the blockchain. And then other projects there are, for example, a points bot. Um, you have Kenneth, which is a weekend board uh, to which you can link Ether. Bright ID is, uh, is working on identity. Then the com circle, so that is headed by me, myself, and I. So there, um, there's lots of contributors working on articles, on videos, um, also internal communication, social media events, and so forth. And then there is the DAP. So that is definitely last but not least. More about that in a second. But there's one more thing that I want to tell you guys about the community. This is one of my favorites. So we have a system and we call it the Reward DAO. So every month we dish out points to our contributors because we really want people to just be involved to help us uh, building the future of giving. So here you see just one week of work. Um, and as said, we want people to prove what they have done. We want people to connect with their audience. So that's why we find video very important. And so here you see, for example, um, there in the middle, um, you see Bowen talking about his smart wet contract, you see King Flurkel from Swarm City, you see Lansky, who has, um, with, who went very alien here, um, and who wrote some fantastic texts. So uh, this, this gives you an idea uh, of how transparent and how accountable we want to be, and that we truly want to be open, inviting, and connecting with people. So what's also fun is actually, so you can visit this, by the way, on fame.giveit.io. And the, the project, the website in itself, is also a social coding uh, project uh, developed by Edu. And uh, for this project itself, itself, we're also dishing out points. So this is a, a perfect example of how our social coding circle actually works. And so the next point is our DAP, the platform, which is for us um, an answer to some of the challenges that the nonprofit sector is dealing with. So we are currently in closed alpha and we as a team are on it. So you actually see here uh, already uh, some of the circles, there are more below. Uh, we are all on there with our entire administration and we are getting paid on our DAP. So it actually works, we are live. Uh, but it's still in closed alpha, as said, so it's not open to uh, the general public just yet. So this is, uh, as said, where we are coming from and to which we want to like provide an alternative. So you come from the situation where you have no real oversight, no, not enough transparency, and a focus on this centralized point. And we want to decentralize this, and we will mostly give the focus on the giver because the, the, the person actually donating the money and this person is really a part of our community. This is really important. 
And so here you can see the three building blocks of our DAP. So of our donation application, as we like to call it. So you have um, the community, so the DAC, we talked about this. So this can be, for example, uh, disaster relief. And then you have campaigns. Campaigns are specific actions. So this could be, for example, okay, a campaign that is focusing on disaster relief in Haiti. And then as a third element, you have the milestones. And these are very specific um, actions that are happening. So now um, to dive into this in a little bit more detail, um, we're going to give you an example. So you could say, OK, I'm going to um, start a DAC, a community for a cause that I believe in. So you create this. And this is very simple. It's just a click of a button, create a community. And then once, once you have done this, uh, or even separately from this, you can say, OK, uh, when you want to stop global warming, um, well, to do this, we're going to build solar panels. And to build solar, solar panels, you're going to create a campaign for solar panels. And to make this in this campaign, you can describe in detail how you're going to do this. And then you are going to go more granular and you can attach milestones to this. These milestones can say in detail everything that you are doing to make this a reality, to get those solar panels built. And then uh, as a giver, as I said, you have uh, a lot of power. You can say, OK, well, global warming, that is too vague to me. I want to donate directly to the solar panels or I even want to donate directly to um, the um, specific elements, uh, the ingredients of the campaign, uh, the milestones. That is all possible already right now in our DAP. And you decide, you have a lot of decision power, and this uh, is possible because when you create a community and also when you create a campaign, you will receive tokens. So these tokens are linked to you and they give you a power, the power of governance. You can make decisions with these tokens. And um, yeah, so more about that in a bit. And um, so then, so we use our liquid pledging smart contract and that gives you a lot of possibilities. So I said, you can donate directly to a campaign, which actually means that you pledge your money to them and they will decide uh, to which milestones they give. And the same when you give to a community, they can decide to which campaigns they give and the campaign will create the milestones. Or you can go directly um, and all these lines show you a little bit that you can pledge your funds or you can make decisions directly. However, you decide how involved you want to be. And um, that is an extra, uh, an, an extra element that will make you even more involved or will make you want to want to be more involved is that when you see that um, a campaign is not using funds or making plans to use the funds the way you want to or a DAC you can decide well I'm just going to take my money back and I'm going to invest it in another campaign that is really making a difference because they're talking a lot but I don't see a lot happening so as long as the funds are not locked in a campaign and dedicated to a specific milestone, you can just take your funds back and pledge them to another campaign. So you are in control. So this gives you a little bit of an overview how this works. And um, I think it's important also to mention here, so there are responsibles, responsible people in every building block. So you have the delegate in the DAC, a campaign manager in a campaign, and a milestone manager in a milestone and in the future uh, with our very flexible smart contracts you'll be able to even have more than one person taking uh, decisions for these different building blocks what is also very important um, so yeah you can take control as I said by taking back funds but there are other checks uh, uh, to make sure that there is no abuse because whenever a campaign is made or whenever a milestone is created and then completed you have reviewers and those reviewers are dedicated people who need to really check and make sure that the money is spent uh, the way it was decided that it needed to be spent um, and that's the example i gave uh, before about my own uh, payment me working in a dac 
my um, work gets reviewed and if it's not okay it will get rejected so this is the ent entire flow as it uh, currently exists in our alpha so you can really as a giver you can follow in our depth what happens until the milestone from the beginning until the milestone is completed and the recipient whoever that is receives the funds and a little bit about the uh, technology behind it uh, so uh, it is a lot of the magic that happens beside behind the scenes is uh, through the liquid pledging smart contract so everything um, Every time you make a decision, every time that a milestone is completed, a campaign is created, all these things, every every element is actually a transaction on the block, blockchain. And so the fact of um, approving or canceling, this is all handled through our very flexible liquid pledging smart contracts. And um, this is something, um, These I am not a developer, but I can already see and I already know very well now uh, that these uh, contracts are um, fantastic and very open. So you can, for example, um, imagine in the future if your organization uses this, that you can build a lot on top of this. So you can do scheduling or, for example, if you want to approve a milestone, you can uh, have this approved by a multi-sig. So a number of people have to sign it before a milestone get approved to just give you one example. So a lot is already possible and a lot more will be possible in the near future with our smart contracts. So this is our DAP. Um, it's all in there. It's um, currently uh, ready, we could say. And so being in the situation, this is, this is where we were um, in January. We were really happy. We were really happy unicorns, ready for liftoff. But then something happened. So um, you might know this picture or you might know a um, non safe for work picture uh, version of this picture, which I'm not going to put on YouTube. But you might remember how Kim Kardashian tried to break the Internet. Well, we had a similar thing on happening on the blockchain. We had some little kitties who almost broke the Ethereum blockchain. And so um, it was, of course, not only Crypto Kitties. We love Crypto Kitties. It was just that many projects were launching at the same time. And, um, well, Ethereum was just not ready for it and is not ready for this. So um, for the moment, as you most probably know, if you work in the space, there are scaling issues. Uh, for the moment, the transaction costs are very high. Um, and yeah, so there is network congestion. This is something that we saw um, when we actually deployed on mainnet because that's the stage where we are that we are in right now. We were ready to launch our MVP, and um, at that that point, whenever if we just wanted to create our basic campaigns that you saw, it cost about fifty dollar per transaction and everything is a transaction so creating a campaign creating our community and so of course for um, um, a non-profit it's this is not possible uh, this cost is not uh, possible uh, if you work in a non-profit for every transaction so uh, we didn't want this um, and so we needed to find other solutions and it makes sense of course because right now um, for people who are not in this space I think it's important to say that this technology is very promising but it just still has to evolve so web3 is only emerging this is the beginning of it all and um, so yeah I think some dApps could just say like, yeah, we, we have to go back to the drawing board, we have to stop uh, and everything can come to a screeching halt. But that is not really what happened with us. Uh, this was a challenge, definitely, but I don't think uh, one hour pass without uh, the entire team already looking for solutions. And we found some, we found quite some. So um, the first thing that we did is we unfortunately had to move back to testnet. So here I'm going to get a little bit more technical for the non-technical people, people warning, but not that much because I'm not technical. Um, but so what we did, we moved back to uh, the Rinkeby testnet on, on which we were actually already uh, alive and kicking. 
And this uh, shows you actually the entire flow uh, of the things that currently happen, happened and happen on the Rinkeby testnet. And we realized that that's really okay. Uh, we could just continue uh, to propose our own milestones and create them and then uh, mark them as complete, get them approved, get them reviewed, all of that was possible. And then we just had to find a way to actually get us paid on the mainnet uh, with real ether. Uh, it was just the payout that needed to happen. And so, um, yeah, immediately our fantastic developers came up with a solution. They said, well, hell, we're just going to build a multi-send smart contract. So what we did, we have our giveth multi-sig in, in which we, uh, we keep some of our funds. And uh, what then happens with the multi-send smart contract is that uh, once we sign uh, the transaction of a specific period, all the ether um, goes directly to the people who created the milestones and so who have earned this ether. So this is just all happening in one transaction. So the cost on the mainnet is very low because of this, because it's, it's just all happening in one transaction and we're, we're not all doing them separately. And so we already automated this uh, process partly. But this is of course only the first step. The second step is, and this is, uh, we're close to deploying this, is uh, that we are going to bridge um, the Rinkeby testnet to the main Ethereum net. So what happens is that then very soon you'll be able to donate directly to one of our circles, so one of our campaigns uh, that are linked to the Give It DAC. And actually the moment that you donate Ether, um, Give It, so, or Give ETH, whatever you want to call it, uh, tokens will be minted. And then, um, yeah, well, then it's very easy as of then. Then the, the, the process is exactly the same. You can donate. Um, so the, the DAC will give and pledge funds to the different campaigns. We will just continue creating our milestones on the testnet. And once they are um, completed, then the given tokens will be uh, burned back into Ether. And then we're there. And... Um, so the, the given tokens are back to Ether. That's a correct term to use. So I hope I'll ex I explained it correctly uh, uh, for the technical viewers. Uh, but so the nice thing is we are already up and running and this is coming soon. So uh, uh, this is nice because we can just continue with the development of our dApp. So this is uh, RJ, our main developer, who is working hard on this. And then uh, the next step for us is that we want to launch our uh, own proof of authority sidechain. And um, there are many options uh, for this and not enough knowledge. That's the thing that we do know. And then, yeah, how do you start with this? Uh, which which sidechain side are we going to pick? How are we going to build this exactly? So before uh, we were even able to have a lot of internal discussions about this, um, our co-founder Griff Green was already had already started with this, and that is so fantastic because he is an energy that cannot be stopped. So some of the people call him uh, our guru, but uh, actually we mostly call him just Griff. And he was on it, so he did a number of um, scaling now talks because this is how we call it scaling now. And um, so there were immediately talks with the likes of Parity. Um, uh, with Truebit, Grid Plus, Omisego, BrainBot, um, um, POA Network, and so um, they were all working on scaling solutions for blockchain. So we were talking to the uh, to the big guys who came up with genius solutions, and then uh, the next thing happened, with, which was suddenly uh, organizing in just a matter of three weeks, uh, a fantastic meetup uh, together with Web3 Foundation in Barcelona. And so you can read all about it and find some links on scalingnow.giveit.io. And it was so great because you see the picture on the right, this was day one uh, when all the scaling uh, people came together to share and care to discuss their solutions. And then on the second day, um, these solutions were uh, discussed with the different dev teams that also came over to um, to Barcelona. And we had a really nice, well, we don't call it a conference, but a really nice meetup. It was very informal and uh, it's really beautiful to see how this 
space can come together um, and just be so open to find solutions together to scale uh, give it, uh, sorry, not to scale give it, to scale the future of blockchain, to scale the future of Ethereum. So this is what we did, and this is actually where we are at right now. A lot of uh, things are happening in the space, and it's beautiful to see, and it's really nice to be a part of all this. And yeah, then the future, what will the future hold? Um, we'll see how quick uh, the Ethereum blockchain itself evolves. Uh, we will see how smart and quick all the uh, blockchain developers are. But in the meantime, I would just say, um, whoever you are, um, you are very, very welcome to join us. So we need developers with a lot of experience or with no experience whatsoever. We need communication people. We need ID people. You are all very welcome. So we have um, a Slack and we have a Riot that are bridged. We are mostly on Riot, which is also open source. So uh, you are welcome there. And so if you um, enjoyed this talk, I would say, uh, first of all, go and discover a little bit more about Giveth. And if you really enjoyed this talk, you are very, very welcome uh, to donate. Donate to us as we ourselves, as said, work as a nonprofit. And um, well, you're welcome. So. Um, I hope to see you again soon and I hope you feel like building the future of giving with us after hearing all of this. So talk soon.